So rational inequalities. So these can be tricky, yeah, and the main problem they can be tricky is because we want to solve this inequality. It's asking us, where is this graph here going to be less than 2? And when you see something like this, you'll always see x can't be minus 2 here. Why can't it be? Because then that inequality, or this fraction here, would be divided by 0. That would be a problem. I mean, this doesn't matter for the minute. So when we look at something like this, we want to see to ourselves, all right, how do we do this here? We want to just multiply across by x plus 2, but we can't do that. Because if we were multiplying across by something negative, we know it flips the sign. And we actually don't know what this quantity x plus 2 is. For instance, x can be any real number here. So if that was the case, say x could be minus 4. Minus 4 plus 2 would be minus 2. That means we'd be multiplying then across by something negative, which would flip the inequality. So we just don't know what the value of x plus 2 is. Mainly we don't know if it's negative. So what we're going to actually do is we're going to multiply both sides by x plus 2 squared. The reason why is when we multiply by something squared, well, anything squared is definitely going to be positive if it's a real number. And so we don't actually affect our inequality sign. So I'm down to something like this here. Now, x plus 2 squared is x plus 2 times x plus 2. That means one of these will cancel with this on the bottom. And of course, then we can now have a problem that looks like this. x plus 2 by x plus 3 less than 2 times let's square this stuff out so that's going to be x squared plus 4x plus 4. Now let's go ahead and multiply out the left x by x is going to be x squared plus 3x plus 2x plus 6 less than 2x squared plus 8x plus 8 when we distribute the 2 across there. So we're down here. So it looks like we have two quadratics either side. Let's bring all this stuff over. And the reason why is I, I always keep my quadratic term, my squared term, I like to keep that positive. So let's bring this x squared. Let's leave us with 0 on the left-hand side here. So 0 less than what? So when x squared comes over, that's 2x squared minus x squared. That's just going to be a regular x squared. That's the was dealt with. 3x and 2x is 5x. 5x comes over. 8x then minus 5x is going to be a plus 3x. 6 comes over, 8 minus that 6 is going to be a plus 2. Now it turns out that this quadratic um, option here is a quadratic graph, which we know is u-shaped because it's positive x squared. Where is that greater than 0? So it's really useful to draw sketches for these. So let's draw a quick sketch of what's going on here. So, Okay. So uh, where is that greater than zero? Or essentially, where is this graph above the y is equal to zero point? Well, it's above here and it's above here, okay? And it turns out that solution set for this problem is the same solution set for this problem here. So let's actually figure out these points here. And what do we know these points to be? Well, these are the roots, aren't they? How do we get these roots? Well, we factorize this. Let me say, okay, x is a simple one, x plus 2, x plus 1, so x is either equal to minus 2 or x is equal to a minus 1. So yeah, I, I've drawn around the origin, but I just it doesn't matter for a sketch. So which one is which? Well, this must be minus 1 and this must be minus 2, so neglect my line going through here. Zero points actually up here, okay? So this graph comes through here, some, like so, right? So when I look at this, I know that my actually so my solutions, the x values that solve this, are in here. Okay? So what are they? Well, they're the x values between minus 2 and 1. Now, all the x values, why not these x values? Because these have all values above greater than 0, right? And we want to know where is it actually greater than 0. So actually, no, it's not between it. It's when x gets bigger than minus 1. Yes, we have solutions that are greater than zero. And when x gets goes below minus two, because the graph is constantly going off out this way, so all these values up here above, below minus two, and above minus one, are our solutions for this particular problem here. So let's actually see what that is. So x must be greater than minus one, but it must be less than minus 2.
yeah and we can see this inequality doesn't actually include minus two and we couldn't have included minus two and normally it's a good telltale from the very start i mean they don't use a less than or equal to symbol in this so we won't see less than or equal to inner inequality here because it needs to be strictly greater than zero for us here so it can't be at minus one which is on zero and at minus two so it actually turns out that the solution for this is actually this inequality here so to write our answer just a bit clearer the solution for this is when x is and i've written it this way but it, it doesn't matter you could write it the other way but I, I like to write the more positive or the the bigger value up here to the right so when x is greater than minus one but less than minus two and that is our answer